Uh, Dave um, didn't tell you that my mustache is older than I am. Um, so maybe that was an oversight, I'm not sure. So uh, my topic is um, bad design. Um, before I introduce the topic, I'd like to thank the TEDx team, not only for inviting me here, where Pat and I have had a wonderful time. We've met fascinating people and heard some really great presentations. But the TEDx team also inadvertently inspired my talk by providing an example of bad design. And they did that with the permission form that required several emails back and forth uh, to straighten out. We are all uh, victims, I feel, of bad design. Uh, it's all around us. The TEDx team should not feel bad. Bad design pervades our world. And I'm going to give you some examples of it. Now, some bad design is deliberate. It's intentional. For example, we saw Steve Johnson's uh, hilarious cartoons showing his bad designs. But most bad design is not intentional. It frustrates us. It makes life harder, not easier. Um, and frequently, as I'll talk about, we blame ourselves. So I'd like to give you some examples uh, of bad design. This I saw on my cell phone. Uh, I am assuming most of you have cell phones. Maybe you have one that looks like this. It says, inbox zero messages. You have no voicemail messages. No surprise there. You have new voicemail that cannot be downloaded. What's up with that? I reproduced this. Uh, I reproduced this on my graphics program, and I didn't try to reproduce the icons. You see some squares along the top. I didn't reproduce them, one, because it's hard. And secondly, does anybody know what those icons mean on your cell phone? I sure don't, so I, I didn't even bother. Here is another example that I found. And by the way, found things are really powerful, as Dave Rothbart, our MC, uh, reminded us. Here's another example of a found, uh, a found example of bad design. Never rock or tilt. Machine can fall over and cause serious injury or death. You can die from it, right? <clears throat> Next statement, you won't get a free soda. I mean, what are their priorities? <laughs> this, was, um, this was the radio on a car that I rented. Rental cars are frequently examples of bad design because they have the features that we expect in cars, but we don't know where to find them or how they work. So this is a radio. It says, in the, right in the middle, clear as day, it says, Val Push Select. How do you change the station? And by the way, what station are you on? It doesn't tell you any of that. How many of you have had, have had trouble finding the trunk release latch on a rental car? Right? Bad design. <clears throat> oh, that was, yes. Uh, maybe you've seen this, maybe you haven't. I think you've seen something like it. It's a forest of, <laughs> right? It's a forest of sort of hanging things, okay, that are supposed to give you water or soap, which is which. And if you figure that out, where do you put your hand, you know, <laughs> to get something to come out? Where do you think I found this? Any guesses? Nope. New York City, where I'm from, the Museum of Modern Art, okay, which has a big new exhibit called Applied Design. Okay. <clears throat> so what happens when we encounter bad design? Most of us blame ourselves. We think we're stupid. We didn't we just can't figure it out. It's our fault. No, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's the fault of the people who designed it. What did they fail to do? They failed to look at their design from a user perspective. 
The user is the expert on design. <clears throat> uh, everybody here, if, unless you snuck in, uh, everybody here bought a ticket for this event through Eventbrite, right? Was that easy or hard? I found it hard. It took me four tries to buy two tickets. My partner, Pat, said the name of the website should be changed to Event Dim. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Users are the experts. Often, you're the user. Failure should lead us to think about how to redesign. The new design might not be any better than the old one. So we should, as we think about design, we should be prepared to design and redesign and redesign. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to give you two examples of my design problems. One is the design of this talk. This is a presentation that I had to design before I got here. So what were my examples of failure, of bad design, that I analyzed in order um, to develop what I hope is a good design? <clears throat> well, all the presentations that I've sat through mostly were examples of bad design. There were too many PowerPoints. There were too many words on the PowerPoint. The presenter goes through them too quickly. Um, the PowerPoint is illustrated with dancing letters that go across the screen or that explode or sort of fade out and things like that, which distract from the presentation. I, I become hypnotized by those effects. So I decided in my talk, I would avoid uh, all of that. Um, the talk, this, the speaker doesn't relate to the previous speakers. So I've tried to hear the previous speakers, and I've already referred to some of them, and I'll refer to a few, mo a few more. <clears throat> so that, that was my process in thinking about this talk. Here's another example. As a teacher, I give out a lot of handouts. I'm kind of an old school teacher. I like printed materials. Students can look through them uh, during the lecture or the class. <clears throat> Sometimes there are activities uh, in them. So I have a lot of handouts, and this is what I used to do. I would have the new handouts on a bookshelf, the old handouts under my lo loose leaf notebook that has my notes in it. Students would come in after the lecture. They missed the lecture. They didn't get the handout. I've got to find the old handout. Where is it? When I come back from class, I'm not quite sure where the handouts are, um, where the old ones are, where are the new ones. The new ones aren't really numbered. Maybe they're not in order, and so forth. So I designed a new method for handling uh, handouts, a filing system. It's a filing system. I don't have a file cabinet big enough for this or, or handy enough, so I found some boxes some file folders, and I created a file pocket for each handout. I numbered them before the class. I pick up the pocket, bring it with me to class. At the end of the class, I collect the unused handouts, put them back in the pocket, and I have them. I put them back in the box, and there they are. <clears throat> so uh, all of us can think about the things in our lives, the designs that are bad, that don't work for us, we can think about how to redesign them. I learned about design because the other part of my job is teaching engineering to elementary school uh, children, elementary school students. I work with teachers, and I work with students in that job who are the experts, the teachers, and especially the kids are the experts in, in that job. We heard earlier today from Christian Long uh, and Roseanne Bosch about designing environments for children. Um, I wonder if kids were involved in that design problem. I'm going to show you a video of kids talking about and redesigning a wind-up toy, and their idea was a way to come up with a replacement for the bead, which you might not have. Here goes. They work. Yeah. This is how it moves. Yeah. If you have a real bean beads, you can actually use it like this. Now you want to show it up so that makes it strange. 
if you don't have a bead, you can actually use a pencil eraser. No, you mean not the pencil eraser. Take off the pencil eraser, remember? Take take the pencil eraser and take the eraser and you can actually use this. The metal part. Which the metal is, part. this is how it goes. And I'd just like to close by thanking you and quoting from a, a talk I heard earlier today. Uh, LaShonda Crow Storm said, I thought a very powerful statement, to understand your work, you need to see it through the eyes of kids. Thank you.